how are you? Today I'm gonna read a book about Radio Man by Arthur Duros. So this story is in English and in Spanish. I'm gonna read you the English today. So this is about the story. Radio Man, Arthur Duros. To Harriet Barton and for all the farm workers. Diego woke up on the sounds of a deep voice and a radio. Buenos dias, good morning. The words in Spanish and in English echoed across the room. Esta es la voz de la frontera. This is the voice of the border. Good morning, Texans. Estas lista? asked Diego's grandfather. Abello, I'm ready, said Diego. Beep, beep. A truck's horn sounded outside. Diego's mother, father, and little sister, Alicia, were already waiting in the front seat of the truck. Diego carried the radio and climbed into the truck. Hey, radio man, called Diego's friend, David. David called him. Radio man, because Diego was always listening to the radio. Can I ride with you today? Si vamos, said Papa, waving. Yes, let's go, said Diego. We won't see each other for a while. My family is leaving here tomorrow, so it's my family, said David. Diego's family and David's family were my grand farm workers. They traveled most of each year to find work picking fruits and vegetables. This was the last day of garbage picking. It was a dusty and hot in the fields. The boxes of garbages seemed heavy. Como elefantes, said Abuelo. Diego and David thought the boxes were as heavy as elephants do. While they rode back to the cabins, Diego tuned the radio to a station that plays songs in Spanish. Everyone was tired from the work. Canta, said Mama. Diego sang. David tapped a rhythm on the side of the truck, and Mama helped Alicia clap hands in the time of the music. The next morning, Diego and David said goodbye. They hoped he would see each other soon. Diego waved until David was out of sight. Diego and his family drove west over the mountains. You're listening to KKTS Cactus Radio broadcasting from Tucson Saguaro Cactus Land said a man's voice on the radio that night. This is the After Sundown Show and I'm the Night Owl. On highways, on narrow roads, and through small towns, the family drove from farm to farm looking for work. Hello, you're tuned to Bird Radio, Phoenix, Arizona. I'm talking to you from the banks of the Jello River. When the radio voice got louder and louder, Diego knew they were getting closer to a town. At the melon farm, where his family found work, Diego saw his cousin Sophie and Ernesto. Their family had also found work here. He had not seen these cousins in a long time. The three walked to the school together every morning. When they went back to the fields after school, they looked for Achilla monsters. Once David had told Diego about Achillas, but Diego had never seen one. There's a Achilla, said Diego on the last day of the picking. It looks like one of your dinosaurs, Ernesto, said Soapy. That night, there was a party with music, food, and piñata to celebrate the end of melon picking. My llama, said Abuelo, and people danced to music from the radio. Soapy broke the piñata. I did not think you could run so fast, Diego said to Ernesto. You look like you're being chased by Jilla, said Ernesto. The next day, Diego's family started a long drive to the cherry farms. It was hot in the truck during the day, so the family drove through the cold night. Diego was almost asleep, leaning against Abuelo. When Abuelo jiggled his arm, Escucha, he said. Diego listened to a crackling sound coming from the radio. Abuelo turned the radio slowly. Buenas noches, the voice spoke only in Spanish. The songs were in Spanish too. Abuelo 
heard one of his favorite sons, La Paloma. He told Diego that this station was far, far away in Mexico. Abuelo had listened to the same song in the village where he grew up. He told Diego about the village, about the forest where Father Blessed with black leaves and trees, and about the houses shining in the moonlight. By dawn, the family was near Lodi, California. Good morning, everyone, said the lady woman's voice. She played a song called Stuck in Lodi again. Diego had heard that song every summer when he and his family came to Lodi to pick cherries. But Diego never felt stuck in Lodi. He always meets someone he know. Maybe David would be here. Diego saw two boys he had known at school in Arizona, but he did not find David. While he emptied packets of cherries and took care of Alicia, Diego looked for his friend. During all the days of cherry picking, he looked, but David did not arrive. Today is the last day of the cherry picking, the woman on the radio said. It's been a great harvest this year. Now we'll go north to new places, said Papa. Papa drove until the fog swirled around the truck. Diego heard the ocean waves crashing. You're listening to the big radio in the prison city gateway to the giants, the radio man said. The giants were red wood trees. One tree had a tunnel big enough to drive through. I, I'll tell David about this, said Diego. The family drove through forests and through dry country. They stopped at a roadside store to get something to drink and eat. A woman was looking at melons, trying to find a ripe one to buy. Diego wondered if this were melons he and his family had picked. He looked at the rows of the fruits and vegetables. He knew how to pick them. Finally, the family reached orchards of trees so heavy with apples that the branches almost touched the ground. Diego had never been here before. A horror on New Year's de Campo, Campo Radio Campesina in the sunny side of Washington. Now, the announcements from Campo, Campo Farm Workers Radio from Sunnyside, Washington. The radio announcer gave a telephone number so the people could call in and give their messages. Diego turned up the volume. Paco, this is Lopi. Feliz cumpleaños! Happy birthday! Elena, your cousin called. She will arrive on Friday. Diego listened to the messages and to the campo telephone number again. He ran to the telephone and called the station. The announcer answered, Buenos dias, do you have a message? Diego did have a message. Hello, David, this is Diego. Are you here? Diego heard his own voice on the radio. Someone was listening. The end.